Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Blitz with the Survival Outpost and thank you for tuning in today. I have a top shelf video in store for you guys all about my 2019 winter bug out bag and related gear. Now this bag right here, oh, it's so nice. It is the newest addition to the Maxpedition Entity Series and the largest edition with a capacity of 35 liters. So I figured, hey, I live in an urban environment. I need a pack that's low profile like this. And I also need a pack with enough size to fit in my cold weather gear, you know, the thermals, the heavier duty sleeping bag and things of that nature. So the way this video is gonna break down, it's pretty simple. I have a predefined route from my location to a heavily forested area by a river. It's about six miles from here. To there and I can do it all line foot staying off main roads and staying pretty discreet and low profile so that's gonna be the first stage of the video I'm gonna arrive at that forested area I'm gonna explore it a little bit find a good shelter site and then from there I'm gonna cook some chow and um, just sit back and relax spend the night wake up the next morning have some bacon and eggs and then go ahead and pack everything back in to this bag and hit the trail coming back to the house now once I get back here, we're gonna do an after action report on the pack, we're gonna dump all the contents out, we're gonna do a detailed review on the pack and the gear that I carry in my winter bug out bag. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to stay tuned for this, but for now, let's go ahead and get on the trail. I'm ready to get started. I'm already starting to lose light, so let's head on out. Hey, what's up guys? Listen, I'm getting close. It's been a few hours, but I have about, about a half mile to go until I get to the area by the river that I want to scope out. So game plan then, <clears throat> boom, need to find a shelter site ASAP, get that squared away, get the gear squared away, and then I can kick back, relax a little bit. Also gonna have to just do a quick perimeter patrol just to see what's in the general vicinity as well. So. I'm gonna get back on the trail, get that knocked out, and I'll check in with you guys in a few minutes. The rain cover is great for obviously protecting your pack from the rain. It's great when you leave your pack, you set it down at night, you know for a fact you're not gonna wake up in the morning, there's gonna be a bunch of condensation on it or anything like that. It's gonna be completely dry, but also obviously transitioning seamlessly from the urban environment to the wilderness environment. Throw that multicam on there and it completely changes the pack. So that kind of setup is good to go. All right, so after another hour of hiking, a few minutes later, I found myself a good spot. Directly ahead, about 100 meters, is a large freshwater pond. And then right behind me, or now right in front of me, is the river. So this is like a perfect spot. It's situated deep in here. No, but I haven't seen any signs of human activity, no trash, nothing back here at all. So I'm just kind of looking around, poking around for a shelter site. I think I'm gonna use this as a ridge pole, get the shelter set up and break out the gear. And yeah, guys, like I said, this is a big pack. This is, you know, your winter bug out bags are definitely gonna be larger than your summer. Obviously, you know, you gotta carry cold weather gear, stuff like that. Nothing major here in Florida, but definitely during the winter, I mean, it drops down in the 30s. So having that winter kit is definitely a good idea. Oh, what's this? Yeah, a little something for later. Wash down dinner. The wooby, don't ever leave home without it.
So I'm gonna be sleeping in this tonight with the Wooby. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, so an unintended bonus to having this rain cover is I get to just toss all my gear in here, keep it off the ground while I put up the shelter. So, yeah, that's nice. Wow, oh, man, I have not used a bivy sack in eons. But when you're trying to keep the weight down, every little bit counts. So this is the SOL Survive Outdoors Longer Bivy Sack. It is lined with this Mylar heat reflective. So we're gonna see how good this does tonight. Now for the stuff that you really don't need in your bug out bag, but listen, it's nice to have. Static V recon sleeping pad. This thing is nice and quite comfortable. And yeah, there's something else. Let's see. Oh yeah, of course got blade with me. We'll go through a lot of this stuff either while I'm out in the field tomorrow morning after breakfast or once I get back. Sunlight. Because once it's dark, it's dark. I'm not starting a fire. I'm treating this like a non-permissive environment where fire is gonna attract attention. It's light, it's smell. It's all the things I wanna avoid.
Oh yeah, we look at that. Perfect damn fit. And yeah, you know, I'm not roughing it today, I'll be honest with you. I could have left this at home and stuffed this with leaves and pine needles, this bag right here, but, you know, I like to be comfortable. What can I say? Now, to be honest with you guys, I'm not even sure if I'm going to cook tonight. It just depends. But, I probably won't. Probably just think about breaking out this MRE, and then in the morning, making eggs and bacon. Uh, but first, I gotta head down there to the river and get some water. That's why I love these MSR bags. They're just great. Fold up when you don't need them, right? And they just take up literally no space in your pack. Okay, so I got everything squared away, everything put away. Now, time for chicken noodles. And yeah, it's gonna be hot chicken noodles because I got my MRE heater. I'm gonna use that water I just collected with that. And then for dessert, have a pop tart. And then later on, I don't know, probably enjoy that beer. Fill it up to the line. It's getting a little dark out here. I think a candle might be in order. The sun is starting to come up just a little bit. I really don't need this flashlight on. I'm just doing it for the lighting for the camera. But yeah, it's kind of nice to wake up in the morning and not have to be digging around, starting a fire, trying to get things going when I can just, I got it right here with the stove. And honestly, I mean, maybe it's a cheat. I don't know. This is not a bushcraft expedition. You know, there's a big difference between a bug out situation and simply going out in the woods and enjoying yourself, right? Um, this you're wanting to, like I've said before, you're wanting to maintain a lower profile, so a fire and the noise of the fire and the smell of the fire and the sound of the fire. And, um, you know, the signature it puts off is just detrimental to <laughs> maintaining a low profile. So a stove like the Optimus Crocs is perfect. I get water going in no time flat with this thing and pretty soon we'll have some hot chow. Oh yeah, that nasty pond water, all good to go. <sighs> this right here, check this out. See that? Exotag 12 hour candle. Don't get me wrong, great candle, okay? But it did not last for 12 hours. It lasted from about 10 to six. And you can see it definitely was used. So, you know, always not saying anything negative about Exotag at all, guys. Um, I love Exotag products, but you just gotta get out there and test your gear. This worked out great, but definitely not 12 hours. Okay, the bacon is looking good and done. Let's get these eggs going. 
Oh, look at that. Mmm, yum. Oh yeah, breakfast is served. Mm. Okay, so it's about time to hit the trail. I'm gonna break down the shelter, get everything packed up in my Maxpedition pack and get the hell out of here before the sun gets any higher up in the sky because my whole point is I want to avoid human contact coming out of this area. I don't want anybody to see me entering or exiting this spot at all, period. So I'm gonna go ahead and break everything down get back home and we'll meet back up in my garage and we'll have a really close detailed look at that Maxpedition pack and then everything I carry in it. So stay tuned, I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, we're back after a shower and some dinner. I'm feeling great, all cleaned up, and now it's time to dump the pack out. We'll have a look at just the pack completely empty. Then after that, have a look at the gear. But first, actually, you know, now that I think about it, look at the size of this pack. I mean, it looks a lot heavier than what it actually is. I mean, just by the size, right? So let's do a weigh-in real quick. I wanna have a look and see how much this actually does weigh. Just to be 100% sure, you know, All right, let's have a look at this. Twenty-five pounds on the dot. That's counting camera gear. So I would subtract a couple pounds for that right off the bat. All right, so we'll start with the outside pockets. Two flashlights. Leatherman. Fire kit and, oh yeah, this, uh, this multifunction carabiner here. I think I showed you guys this before. Pretty cool. And then the zipper pocket, the candle, Exotac. Crappy wire saw that'll probably break the first time I use it. And another backup lighter. So that pocket's cleared out. Gonna flip it over on the other side. Yeah, almost forgot about the first aid. 
and the sanitation kit right here. Ah, there's like, I, <laughs> as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that went in this bag and still coming in under 25 pounds, which makes me real happy. On the outside of this pack, the design is quite simple. There's a large zippered pocket on this side and then a matching zippered pocket on this side, which once you have a look inside has one, two, three pockets right there and then this row of webbing. And then here on the inside is a large zippered pouch. And you got the same thing going on on the reverse side. The only difference being is there is no there is no row of webbing right here but there is still zippered pocket and actually there's also this mesh pocket right here which i just which i just noticed so yeah it's a little bit different layout suited for different gear and then if we're just looking at the pack overall um having a look maybe starting with the top this handle is a custom design of theirs and it's called the shape shift and it's pliable and a little spongy, but still firm, if that makes sense. So it's um, really easy to manipulate and use, which is a, you know kind of nice, especially if you have gloves on, you don't want a handle that's that's way too short and you know constrained to the pack. So handle's good to go. And then of course these zipper pulls, zippers in general are top quality, of course. What else would you expect from Expedition? But also easy to operate with gloves on. And for those who travel, you see that it's lockable right there. So that's a nice little touch. And really on the front of the pack, there's really not much, not much else going on, except to uh, mention there are these magnetic wings on each side. So, you know, the deal with clamshell designs is you wanna be able to unzip it a fair amount. You may not need to unzip it all the time, but you don't want this lid to fall completely down. So these magnetic wings keep the zippers in place and prevent them from falling down and going, um, you know, and just, you know, your gear kind of get, getting a little messed up. So that's, um, that's the front of the pack. Nothing else going on here. It's definitely non-tactical as you can see. Oh yeah, this nice little, nice little aesthetic touch here with the Maxpedition logo and then let's let's turn it around on the back this padding deep look at that you see my <laughs> right it's just a one row on each side real simple and it runs down all the way to the bottom and then the straps there is webbing on each side which you can easily use to attach one of their one of their pouches like this one right here that uses this um kind of modified malice clip design, which looks real secure. So you can mount that right there, or this side, whatever, it's all good. Uh, all this material is seat belt material, so it's a lot thinner and lighter than the traditional strap material that you see on packs, especially military ones. Uh, what else to mention here? Um, yeah, Duraflex buckles down here, quick release. And then sternum strap right here. And then finally, once you put this pack on, right, and you adjust it down here, the major adjustments, then you move on to the minor adjustments, which you can do right here. And that basically will pull, will pull the strap closer to the pack or further out. So that's how that works. It's a nice little touch and nice little design. Allows you to give those fine adjustments to the pack to get it fitting just perfect on your back. So that's really about the outside of the pack. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> couple other things to mention here there's there's just there's a spot for a pass-through for a trolley handle so for those people who travel you can easily just open this up pass the handle through and you're on your way there is concealed carry compartment here that is velcro compatible as you might expect this side is secured with a big strip of velcro so it's basically locked for lack of a better term this side however is not and in here I have Maxpedition Velcro compatible holster and two mag carrier. Now there's no gun in here because YouTube demonetizes videos whenever they see guns. So you can just imagine a gun in there, big happy open space with Glock 19 and two extra mags. So that is truly it for the outside of the pack aside from this grab handle.
let's go ahead and crack it open and see what we got going on in here with this clamshell design, which I absolutely love. It makes it super easy to just lay the pack down, open it up, and locate what you need with the quickness. The only downside to this type of design is if you zip it all the way down or zip it down halfway, the zippers have a tendency to have a mind of their own and move depending on how much weight you have on it. So what's nice about this pack is they built in these retention straps right here, which you can easily hook into the top lid. So instead of it just kind of unzipping and folding back, it's stopped right here dead in its tracks. So, that, so that's a nice little touch and you know definitely something I would expect from a pack of this caliber. Now, looking on the inside here, we got a lot, a lot going on. Let's go ahead and start at the top right here. There is this zippered pocket, which I had those wet wipes in. Then moving down directly below it is this large padded laptop pocket, easily fit a 15.6, maybe a 17. Not exactly sure on that. And then on each side of the pack are these big, huge mesh pockets. I mean, look at how deep that is. That's super deep. So, you know, you're talking like, you know, you can put a cook set in there. You can put a, um, I don't know, let's say a, uh, you know, large water bottle, maybe 32 ounce or, you know, what have you. So that's a, just a kind of nice catch all functional pocket. And then the lid of this pack is Velcro compatible. So, you know, I have my first aid kit right here. And then I have this, this pocket, this Maxpedition pocket, I forget the exact name of it, that I had my hygiene kit in. And then finally above it at the top of the lid is another zipper pocket with a little hanger right there, keys, whatever. And then pretty deep, you know, about, about that deep. Okay, so that's it for the bag. You've seen the outside, you've seen the inside. This is the largest bag in the Entity Series. Checking in at 35 liters and fully loaded out, as you saw, right at 25 pounds. Subtract a few pounds for my camera weight. So let's go ahead and look at all the gear that I decided to pack in here. Okay, so back to the gear, starting with the shelter kit, which is quite honestly, and I mean, you could argue this point a little bit, I guess, but probably the most important bit of gear that you carry in your bug out bag. So I'm here in Florida. It's obviously not really super cold. It drops down in the 30s, maybe, maybe high 20s on a really, really cold night, but shelter is still really important. I have my Miltech Flectarn military issue poncho. This thing is obviously great for use as a poncho and also as a shelter, like you saw me set up previously. I also have my comfort item, the climate uh, sleeping pad. You guys also saw that. Then of course the bivy sack and then various related shelter items, you know, for actually setting up the shelter. Got this bungee cord right here. Also have a whole bunch of paracord and also those stakes. And then there is, ah, right, of course, another comfort item, the pillow. And that pretty much sums it up except for the saw. And you guys, I, I believe you guys have seen this before. I, I think I showed it in a previous video, but um, it's pretty sweet. And let me see if I can get the camera to focus. Come on, work for me. There we go. Um, very effective, really good saw and definitely not some creep, you know, cheap, um, cheap wire saw, you know, you pick up for a couple bucks and it breaks after the first use, if you even get through the first use. So that's the shelter kit. The only other thing left to mention is the Wooby. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's check out the H2O kit, water purification, water filter, all that good stuff. So considering the fact that I'm in an urban environment and then I transition to a forest environment and probably back and forth, I want to have a water filter that functions well in both environments, okay? So a regular Sawyer Mini is great, but it's not going to filter out those heavy chemicals and things of that nature that you're going to find more so in a urban environment. So what I carry is the Move three-stage water filter by Renovo, and it literally filters out everything you can possibly think of. And then, of course, I have a whole bunch of water purification powder stored in the zippered compartment. So I'm pretty much squared away on water. 
maybe in the future, if I was um, more focused on hiking in the backcountry, I might get um, one of those super pricey, um, God, Katadin hiker or backpacker, but it's like super small. It's like 300 bucks, but um, yeah. Until then, this is working out good for me. And the only other thing left to mention is a Silcock key, bearing in mind the urban environment in which I live. Moving on now to first aid. I wanted to keep it small and compact. This is the same pouch that I carry on my, um, my webbing equipment. And when it comes to first aid, I wanted to keep it small and compact. This is the same pouch. So when it comes to first aid, I wanted to keep the pouch small and compact. This is only for me and nobody else. So this is a Velcro detachable pouch made by ATS and it, um, yeah, it's pretty much slam packed with medical equipment, everything from duct tape to emergency shears to a whole bunch of gloves to a rat's tourniquet, which I'm excited about doing a review on in the future. Definitely not your traditional tourniquet. And then a whole bunch of you know, advanced clotting gauze, bandages, ace wraps, and the like. Also, two chest seals under here, and then this this pouch right here is just, um, I mean, I could carry it on my person, but it's just basically, you know, band-aid, stero strips, some small one by one and two by two pads, things of that nature. So that's the first aid kit, the IFAC. Now, moving on to the the tech kit. Now, all, all I bring with me out here is just this charger. And that's good for charging my phone at least twice, if not more, it can easily charge other devices. And then I bring this multi-device charging cable. So, you know, everything from USB to iPhone compatible, good to go. And then also got some batteries thrown in here for the flashlight and for the wireless mic that I'm running right now. So yeah, 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 good stuff, good stuff. All right, so what do we look at next? Let's look at the cooking setup and food. You see how I like to keep it nice and simple. So the Optimus Crux is just a great stove, you know, and it works very effectively. It doesn't use any fuel tabs. It uses propane and is, um, yeah, it's just good to go. So. When it comes to cooking, I also like to keep that real simple. The Optimus Crux is the way to go. These are about 50 bucks on Amazon, guys, and if you can afford it, man, this is a good, good stove. You definitely will like it. And then, you know, the cook set stuff that I got here, I think I've showed you guys this before. I, you know, I've, I've been toting this set around for a while. It's made by MSR. It has a fork, knife, and spoon set by Tokes. It has a flipper, it has a scrubber, it has, yeah, I got some olive oil on there and then a cutting board. So that's, that's how I roll with the foods. They're sorry, the cook, the, the cook set, the cook system. And then for food, it's all the stuff that I, I had, I just added back in an MRE. So, um, yeah, you know, I got crackers, I got coffee, I got cliff bars, I got tons and tons of peanut uh, butter. I got survival rations. I got the MRE, got some Skittles in there, pretty much squared away with, you know, Last time I checked, it was it, it was a little over 4,000 calories. So over the course of three days and a climate like mine, I think that's good to go. So I don't know about you guys, but I like to brush my teeth on a regular basis and I also like to take showers. So a hygiene kit in the field, it's not super complicated. I got this dry light micro towel by Sea to Summit. And then I just have what you would expect, which is some dental floss, toothbrush, toothpaste, and some shampoo. Oh, and to rotate back to the um, to the H2O kit, this MSR bag right here, that's also part of it. Now, moving on to the fire kit, this is something that I'm gonna carry anyways. Even though I don't plan on making a fire, I can still make a, a like Dakota fire pit if necessary. And I wanna make, make the whole fire starting process as simple as possible. So in this, you know, I got commercial ten tender, I have matches, I have, oh 
goodness, this gigantic survival match. You guys see this? This Exotac Striker, Magbar, and I've just taken, um, taken this tender and just stuffed it in all the empty cracks, right? And then of course those matches, some more tender right there. I think these, this is quick fire, tender quick, tender quick. And then this small knife right here, just, just as a backup, it's nice to have. And then, uh, and then underneath it, you see there's aluminum foil. I don't know if you can see it, but buried way under there is a Fresnel lens. And of course this is a waterproof container, airtight and good to go. I actually, uh, if I recall correctly, this fits an iPhone. That's what it's designed for, but it goes great with this. And actually you can also put real small tea candles in here as well. So of course we cannot forget about the tools. So the Gerber LMF2 is the way to go. Lifetime warranty. Gerber will replace this blade if you somehow manage to break it with no questions asked. This is great for an urban environment. You can actually, the handle is insulated so you can cut through electrical wire. It has a built-in knife sharpener right here in the sheath. It is 100% Molly compatible and also fits on your belt just like that. So this blade, basically indestructible. I've this is my second one, and I've had this for years and beaten the crap out of it, and you would, you would hardly notice except for this little ding on the bottom. So that's the primary blade. The primary multi-tool, let me see, do I have this under control? Yeah, the primary multi-tool is the Leatherman Mutt. Then I have my small flashlight that's powered by AA battery with uh, red, red and blue lenses. And then finally, the Olite M2R Warrior. Okay, so that's it guys. That is the Maxpedition 35 liter Entity Urban Gray Man Backpack. So I hope you liked it. I love it. I'm really happy to have this opportunity to collaborate with Maxpedition and review some of their equipment and hopefully we'll continue down the same path in the future. Now, as a winter bug out kit, obviously you need to accommodate yourself for the conditions in which you live, okay? So, you know, me here in Florida, my winter bug out bag is going to be a little bit different than somebody who lives in Idaho or Canada or what have you. So that's the first thing you really have to keep in mind when you're choosing a bug out bag and packing it out. You need to figure out, okay, well, basically two things. What is the situation I'm trying to escape from? And then secondly, what type of gear do I need to bring? Is it summer or winter, right? Because the gear from winter is different than the gear for summer, obviously. So once you come up with that, and you know, for me in my area, it's natural disasters. And I'm sure that's probably the same for the majority of us out there. If we're gonna experience an actual shit hit the fan event, it's probably gonna be a natural disaster. So keeping that in mind, you pack accordingly. You're not packing for a zombie invasion, nuclear apocalypse, EMP attack, you know, what have you. So keeping that in mind, that's, you know, I pack my bag out appropriately in that nature, taking care of the survival essentials and then adding the luxury items in at the end, like the pillow I don't need really. Do I really need this super comfortable sleeping mat? Obviously not, you know, so I can definitely drop some weight if I wanted to, but I chose to err on the side of comfort, right? So all that, now let's go ahead and talk about bug out locations. Okay, it's pretty simple. If you do not have a bug out location set up already, you have to figure out what you're gonna do if you have to leave your primary residence. So the first option, obviously, if you don't have your own bug out location is go to friends or family. If, if they're in the reasonable area, but they're removed enough away from the event you're trying to escape from, that's a great option. You still need your bug out bag, but it's not, um, it, it's probably the most comfortable option, right? So friends and family being the first one, Secondly, obviously you can go get a hotel. Now you probably want to know hotels in your general area that you can easily contact because the minute something happens, like say there's a hurricane here, people are going to be headed to the hotels in a heartbeat. So they're going to fill up really quick. So you need to be a little proactive with that planning and your strategy. And then finally, you know, you can just go camping. Maybe you try and hit up a national forest, stuff like that. Do a little car camping. But if that doesn't work out and you have no bug out location set up, you're going to have to run in the woods. Honestly, it's your last resort, but you need to be able to prepare or you need to be able to survive in that environment and be prepared for that. So that's why I went ahead and hit the woods with this gear, because if I can, if it, if it functions properly in 
that type of environment, I can guarantee you it's going to be perfectly fine stand, stand over at my dad's house or at an extended stay. So that's, those are the kind of factors I keep in mind at a very high level when I'm you know, planning for a bug out situation and packing out my gear. You guys might do it differently. It all has to be tailored to the event you're trying to escape from and your environment. And the only other thing to mention is um, over the course of choosing a pack, which I'm gonna do a video on this soon, you have to kind of make that decision, the big, huge decision. Do I go tactical or do I go gray man? Some people say they want to just take a school bag. Some people say, screw it, I'm just going to go full line tactical, you know, with my gear, molly webbing all over the place in camo. To be quite honest with you guys, it really depends on where you live. You know, if let's say you live close to a military town with a lot of army surplus shops or, or you live out in rural areas, it's probably going to be more common for uh, you to see people with tactical gear or you know what have you. And I'm not talking chest rigs, just, just backpacks in general. So that's gonna be more commonplace than, than throwing that into an urban environment. So I've kind of gone back and forth on this one. And as you can see with the Maxpedition pack, it's perfect in an urban environment. That's the environment that I'm in the majority of the time. So I want my pack to reflect that. I don't want camo, I don't want tactical. But if I need that capability, all I gotta do is throw that rain cover on and I'm good to go. So that's what I like about that pack. I tailor that 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 design and that collar for the environment that I'm in and that is suburbia. So that's um that's how it goes guys. Listen, um, I covered just a fraction of, of the bug out bag planning and strategies and stuff like that. So obviously hit me up with those comments. Let me know what you think. What are your bug out strategies? And obviously let me know about the star of this video which is the Maxpedition Entity Pack. Once again, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.